What's going on engineers? On the off chance that you wanted to build a Linux loadable kernel module to Rickroll people, you've stumbled upon the right video. So let's do this. Well actually, let's learn about loadable kernel modules, and then do this. Okay, so even though the title of this video is ridiculous, and we will get to the trolling part of this video, we gotta first learn about what is a Linux loadable kernel module. So first, think of Linux as being broken up into two parts. On one side you have what's called kernel space, and on the other side you have what's called user space. And the big difference between the two is the CPU privilege rings that they'll run in, as well as what sort of programs that you'll find in. So user space programs is probably 99% of what you see. If you're just a normal user that gets in your computer, goes to a browser or whatever, those are all going to be user space programs. So that's, that's your Atom, that's Chrome, that's all the terminals, that's, that's everything you find on an operating system that's not directly in the kernel. These programs run in what we call ring 3. And ring 3 is the outer ring of the CPU that is the least privileged of all the rings. For instance, user space programs that run in ring 3 can't do things like talk directly to hardware. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, I talk to hardware all the time. I can go to my terminal, I can type curl google.com, and then suddenly it makes a request on the network, which is a piece of hardware, and it returns me the information for a page. So isn't that talking to hardware? And the answer is yes, it is talking to hardware, but it's doing so through APIs exposed by kernel modules running in kernel space. The primary purpose of kernel space programs and things that run in ring zero is to connect user space applications to physical hardware. But kernel modules don't just connect user space programs to physical hardware, it can also connect user space programs to pseudo hardware, ones that from a user space point of view looks like real hardware, but it actually isn't. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to essentially create a Rickroll device. But we'll work up to that, so let's start slow. We're just going to create a, just a, a minimal Linux loadable kernel module. Now, kernel programs are not like normal programs. Normal programs, they start from the top and they run to completion and that's it. Whereas kernel programs run more like programs that respond to events. So what you're doing is you're creating a piece of code that will wait for certain events and then it'll perform some action on that event. Now we will be writing in C, but because we're writing programs that are designed to extend the Linux kernel, we don't have access to every single function that the C standard library normally exposes. We do, however, have things that the Linux kernel exposes. So we need a few header files to start. We need init, module, and kernel, and those are going to be needed for some of the functions that we're going to do in this, in this module. So we need to define two functions in our kernel module. The first one is going to be what is going to run as soon as the module is loaded into the kernel, and the second one is going to be what runs as soon as the module is unloaded from the kernel. And then finally, two additional lines to register those two functions. So the reason I say load and unload is because the Linux kernel allows you to take kernel modules and just inject them right into a running kernel. It's not necessary to say, take the Linux source, put your kernel module into that source, and then recompile the entire kernel. This is one powerful feature of Linux that exists, which allows you to just inject things into the kernel. So all our kernel module is going to do to start is just write to the kernel log saying that it was loaded and unloaded. So remember I said that you don't have access to all the functions from C standard library. So like if I want to print something, I can't do printf because printf doesn't exist. However, the kernel does expose a function called printk. And with printk, you can specify some message. So when the module is loaded into the kernel, we'll log a message like rickroll module has been loaded with a new line. And then same with unloaded. So with unloaded, we'll do the same thing, except it'll be unloaded instead of loaded. And then for the init, we got to return an int, which is a status code. So we'll return zero, and then we're good to go there. The last thing we need to build our module is a make file, and I've created one here. It just has two particular things. One is all, and one is clean. When you do make, it will run the all, and when you do make clean, it'll clean up all the stuff that it used to make the module. It's now ready to rock. We'll go to our directory, and we'll simply type make. It'll do some work, and then once it finishes, 
we have uh, tons of new files here, but the one of interest is going to be this .ko file, which stands for kernel object file. So the command we're going to use to actually inject this module into the kernel is going to be called insmod, I-N-S-M-O-D, and we got to use sudo, it's a, this is a root command, and we're going to specify rickroll.ko, and then as soon as I hit enter, you can see that the kernel just responded with rickroll module has been loaded. So our module is now running in the Linux kernel. If we want to pull the module out, we can use rm mod. And then in this case, we'll just specify the name because the module is already in the system. It's called Rickroll. And then when we run that, it says, you know, Rickroll module has been unloaded. So this is a really simple kernel module that just registers itself and then unregisters itself. It doesn't do anything special. So next thing we're going to do is expand our module to build a, basically a device that will just rickroll people when they try to read from that device. So to do this, we need a couple of new pieces of code. We need two new headers, which will assist us in actually sending information to the user beyond the bounds of, you know, kernel space to user space. We're going to define our device name, we'll just call it rickroll. We're going to define four function prototypes, which is when the device is opened, when the device is released or closed, when the device is read from, and when the device is written to. And then we're going to create our struct, which points each of those to the right function. Once we request a major number for the device, we'll need a place to write that to, so we'll do a static int major there. So next we need to slightly modify our init function. The thing we need to do is called register chr dev, and that's that's character device. We're going to give it a zero, which says dynamically give me a major number, specify the device name, and then we have to give it this struct that points the different operations to the right function. And then that should give us a, a major number. We will need to check to make sure, and if it did if it did not give us a major number, then we need to basically alert, you know, put an alert in the kernel that says, you know, rickroll load failed. Next thing we need to do is modify our unloading function to unregister that character device by supplying it the major number and the device name. And that'll be it for that. So next thing we have to do is actually build out these four functions. So we got to build out dev open release read and write. Now all we're really concerned with is read. So open release and write is going to be fairly simple. I've already written it. So let's copy copy it in here. So dev open, we're simply going to say rickroll device has been opened. That's going to log a message to the kernel as soon as something tries to read from the device, then it'll return zero for success. If somebody tries to write to that device, it'll say, sorry, rickroll is read only. You're not allowed to actually write to that device, and it'll return an e-fault. And then once it's released, so once it closes the connection to that device, it'll say rickroll device closed. It'll return a zero for success. So th those are all pretty simple. The one that's slightly more confusing is going to be dev read. So we'll create our initial function here. And then inside dev read, we have to do a couple things. So we have to first track errors. So we'll do int errors equals zero. Next, we have to actually create our message. And of course, it's a rickroll. So the message is going to be never going to give you up, never going to let you down. And a couple dots. And that'll be that. We'll also need the message length. So we'll do message len. It's going to be string len message. So this is the point where we're actually going to send the message from kernel space to user space. And that's what this buffer variable is for. This is the buffer from user space, which we're going to copy a message into. So to do so, we do errors equals, because this function called copy to user, if there's an error, it's going to return the error there. And the signature for this is going to be, where do you want to send it to? And of course, we want to send it to buffer. And then what is the message? So in this case, we'll send message, and then how many bytes are you sending? So in this case, it'll be message len. The last thing to do is either return the length of the message you sent or an e-fault if there was errors. So we can simply do that by doing return errors equals zero. If there's no errors, then just return the message length or return an e-fault. So at this point, we should be ready to actually make this module. So we'll come back into our terminal here. And we'll first do make clean. So it cleans up all the stuff it did before. And then we'll just do make. Give it a second. Check our directory. And we got a rickroll.ko file. No errors, so we're good to go. We're ready to inject this into the kernel. Now we still have our tail from the kernel log, the log and everything we're doing. So it's time to insert the module. So sudo insmod 
rickroll.ko. That's in. Rickroll module has been loaded. And you see where it says 508? That's going to be the major number. And I'm going to need that to create a node in slash dev. So go into slash dev. And remember, dev contains all the basically nodes to the devices on the system. So we have to register a, a new one, which is going to point this device to our Rickroll generator. So to do that, the command is mknod, and we're going to specify the name, whatever we want it to say here. So it'll be Rickroll. And then we're going to do C for character device, and then the major number, 508, and then a zero. Once I do that, you can see now that there is a new node called Rickroll to character device, major number 508. It also appears right here. So we're finally at the grand finale here. If our device is working properly, just like we can cat, you know, dev, you know, random, for instance, we can also now cat dev Rickroll. When we do that, you can see that it just goes crazy, just writing, you know, never going to give you up, never going to let you down over and over again. You can also see above here, as soon as I start it, it says device is opened. And then as soon as I stop it, it says device is closed. And that's coming from those two functions, dev open and dev release. So now I can just leave this in the kernel and then wait for somebody to find it on my machine. And then they'll get a little surprise. And that's it for the video. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I seriously doubt that Linus Torvalds had intended for loadable kernel modules to be used like this. But hey, you know, Linux is all about options. And today I wanted to make a pseudo or Rickroll device and show you how to do kernel modules. And that's what I did. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or come see me on Discord. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.